Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, government goes ahead with Treasury bills issuance despite an application filed at the Supreme Court seeking to halt the process. We shall be analyzing the implication of this suit on the economy with a financial economist. Meanwhile, Bank of Ghana gets ready for Treasury bill auction later this afternoon after receiving significant bids from banks insisting it already has parliamentary approval for the borrowing. We shall be telling you more on that. Plus, government expresses commitment to support entrepreneurship group by creating a conducive environment to attract the needed investment. Almost all the indicative targets set between us and the IMF we have outperformed a lot of them and most of them. So the economy is now doing very well. We have details of this and more lined up for you. Please stay. Thanks so much for joining us. I am Payo Skoju Baka. Government is going ahead with the issuance of treasury bills and other commercial banks today. This is despite an application filed at the Supreme Court seeking to halt the process unless it secures prior approval from Parliament. George Yafe has more. Joy Business understands that the committee that oversees these auctions has already started receiving bids from the commercial banks from yesterday. Persons close to the auction committee have also told Joy Business that just filing an application in court should not result in them halting the process. This is because there should be some pronouncement from the Supreme Court on the way forward when it comes to these auctions. The committee has also argued that the issuance of domestic bonds and papers doesn't come under the law. That requires Parliament's approval. Government has also argued that they are going ahead because treasury bills have matured and it needs to move quickly to settle investors because of the legal implications of a failure to settle these debts on time. So let's raise some money to finance other critical expenditure of the state. It also argued that not going ahead with these auctions could grind government business to a halt and possibly cripple the economy. Meanwhile, the private legal practitioner Jonathan Amable has filed the application at the Supreme Court earlier to, um, who earlier told Joy Business that he will move to cite um, government for contempt if they go ahead with the process. And this, the further thing is that when you have the, the treasury bills and the bonds, the Supreme Court has held that any contract which is concluded in contravention of Article 181 is void. And okay. nobody can derive any benefit from it. Uh, so that the government can come back and claw back interest payments that it would have made under those contracts from the citizen. All right. So ha has, has the registry... Government. I don't uh, think we should council, subject our citizens to that. That's fine. So, council, has the registry uh, given a date to begin hearing? No. So the, the practice of the Supreme Court nowadays is that you file your application um, when the attorney general is served, then the registrar will now issue a hearing notice with a, with a date for the hearing of the application. But um, the bailiffs have confirmed that the government has been served. And so we are expecting that tomorrow there wouldn't be any activity in terms of issuing treasury bills um, for settlement on Monday until the court has been able to determine the matter. So, so will, you, will you cite the attorney general for contempt of court if they go ahead to issue bonds? I mean, I will consult my lawyers if the, the government should go ahead and do that. But I mean, Recent history has shown that the government, if you look at what happened with parliament and all of that, the government, right. they understand the situation that once the application is filed, their hands are stayed. And we've got a very latest in relation to this because the Bank of Ghana is getting ready to carry out today's treasury bills auction. Well, this was after it received some significant requests from commercial banks for today's activity. My colleague George Yafi joins me in studio to tell us what we are learning. George, um, quickly tell us what more are we learning on this. Some explanation here. You know that even though as government or the Ministry of Finance, these auctions are, are carried out on behalf of government that is by the Bank of Ghana. Mm. And what we understand is that 3 o'clock today, 
they should go ahead with these auctions, what they have picked up from these commercial banks. Some interesting numbers in terms of the bits. But don't forget that it is the price that plays a very important thing when it comes to these whole auctions. So mm -hmm. you, could have in, you could have a lot of bits coming in, but at the end of the day, what price are they asking? And therefore, we'll be looking forward to the results of this auction and whether they can go ahead for the settlement on Monday. Great, George. Thanks so much for joining me. And I'm told we have economist Professor Lord Mensah for a conversation on the back of this. Thanks so much, Professor Mensah, for joining us here on the Marketplace. Now, first off, what do you make of this development? Yes, um, it is expected. I mean, because if you have a government that its financing sources are globally concentrated on short-term side of the market, I mean, it's expected that you know, sometimes there could be an abuse. I mean, over, you know, by looking uh, regulations and then making sure that, I mean, they, they get a fund as it is required. So I'm not surprised. And then also, if you look at the schedule that Bank of Ghana came out with in terms of issuing of treasury bills, you realize that this government has been uh, um, going against those schedules and issuing, you know, treasury bills off schedule. And from where I see, I think Bank of Ghana acting as, I mean, an intermediary between investors and then, you know, government that have prompted the government to do the right thing. And, you know, when it happens like that, it, 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 it brings down investor, you know, confidence because, you know, the investor does not know what is likely to happen. And we may have to appreciate that, you know, law, finance, and then, you know, economics move hand in hand. I mean, where the laws don't work, I mean, obviously, you, you, you seem to have, you know, regulatory problems here and there. And so, um, it can have impact further issues when it comes to um, the treasury bills. But what do you make of arguments from the committee which says that, look, um, we got parliamentary approval um, during the budget approval process, so really um, the, co the contestation about this is, is much ado about nothing. Yeah, I think um, we may have to be careful here and uh, look at the quantums of monies that are involved. Because if you get an approval that you're going to raise money or you have a budget, you know, deficit that needs to be financed through treasury bills, it does not necessarily detect the specificities as to 91 day, 182, or, you know, um, um, one year. Um, if you get approval, then you can say that it's more or less like a shelf registration you've done, but that is not the case. We need the regulations on the specificities as to whether you are issuing these quantums for 91 days, and it has to go through the approval of the, you know, the parliament. And there's a reason why it has to go through, you know, parliament, because you're borrowing on behalf of the people. Treasury bill is also part of the borrowing. It's like the bonds that are issued. And so if, you know, government is borrowing on the market, and for now, you know, treasury bill has only been the only source of financing that the government has. From where I sit, I mean, government should seek approval of the, you know, from the parliament. All right. So ultimately, if it does appear that, well, the court grants this application, what is going to be the impact on the treasury market? It's going to be a huge one because, I mean, it will build up uncertainties on the short term end of our market. So the assurance on the market is going to go down. And when it happens like that, the investor confidence, you know, goes completely, government is really going to struggle in its operations. I mean, how to even raise money to pay existing, you know, treasury bills will be difficult. And then also looking at pay salaries and all other things. So from where I, see, I think, you know, I don't think it will get to that level where the court will place injunction on that. But the right thing must be done. Bank of Ghana should ensure that the government gets approval from the, from parliament for the help, you know, the, set, the government to issue treasury bills. Very well. Thank you so much, Professor Lord Mensah, for joining us here on the Marketplace. We truly appreciate your thoughts, sir. Uh
Let's shift focus to some other stories. The Deputy Minister of Finance, Dr. Stephen Amwa, says government is committed to supporting entrepreneurship growth by creating a conducive environment to attract the needed investment. Speaking in an interview with Joy Business at the annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion in Accra, Dr. Amwa emphasized um, on effective stakeholder collaboration to support SME development. More in this report. The annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion is Accra's inaugural event focused on enterprise development and job creation. Since January 2023, the program has engaged many stakeholders across all operational regions, highlighting a widespread consensus on the importance of enterprise development and employment promotion. Deputy Minister of Finance, Dr. Stephen Amo emphasized the critical need for entrepreneurship development in Ghana. Um, entrepreneurship is the way to go today, all over the world, because even the normal corporate job space is congested all over the world. So you realize that the giant economies in the world are now adhering to or giving precedence to entrepreneurship. And so activities such as prevailing today must be taken very serious and critical. And I was also encouraging Ghanaian, putting hope back in them that the economy has started doing well. COVID, post-COVID, we grew, we are growing about 0.4. Inflation went to about 54.1. But now we are growing over 5%. Inflation has come as low as about 20%. And a lot of good things are happening. And almost all the indicative targets set between us and the IMF we have outperformed a lot of them and most of them. So the economy is now doing very well. GIZ Country Director Dr. Dirk Adman called for collaboration among stakeholders. Better collaboration and efficient use of available funds, whether from development partners or government sources, can enhance services for SMEs and contribute significantly to economic growth and job creation. The union of service providers has immense potential to drive positive change by fostering collaboration, knowledge sharing and collective action. We can build a support network that transform enterprises development, enterprise development across Ghana. The annual regional network conference for enterprise development and employment promotion was organized by GIZ together with the European Union, the Ghana Hubs Network and the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Enterprises Agency, Kosi Yanki Aye, has emphasized the need to use data for making critical business decisions. In an interview with Joy Business, she urged businesses to collaborate with consultants to improve profitability. She made these remarks at the induction ceremony of the Institute of Certified Business Analysts here in Accra. The role of business analysts is crucial in ensuring that Ghana's operational and strategic business growth needs are met by bridging the gap between the technical teams and business stakeholders. Speaking at an event to induct new fellows into the association, CEO of the Ghana Enterprise Agency, Koshi Yanke Aye, emphasized the importance of leveraging data to drive critical business decisions. Our business environment is transforming at an unprecedented pace. And the role of the business consultant and analyst is more critical than ever. Consultants and analysts like yourselves are uniquely positioned to lead Ghanaian businesses towards sustainable growth, where micro, small, and medium enterprises, the people that I serve and work for, form the bedrock of our economy, employing over 80% of our workforce. Dr. Richard Jones Asase highlighted the essential role analysts play in economic development. So in today's Ghana, where we, we have a lot of challenges around businesses, it is very crucial and critical for business analysts to be, to be, I mean, engaged, business consultants to be engaged, to try and navigate whatever issues that are within a business. I mean, actually limiting the growth of businesses so that they will be able to propel solutions that will, will help the businesses to grow. Some inductees share their perspectives with Joy Business. It's going to help me a lot to transform the way businesses are being done and also to 
play an impact in other businesses. Um, I'm the parliamentary candidate for Eutu Senior East constituency. Uh, when it comes to politics, marketing plays a major role. And so forth. I know going forward, where I work, which is the Contumbra District Rice Factory, will gain a lot because now, even the little which I gained earlier on has prepared the company to be one of the growing industries in terms of rice production in the Western North region. The event was themed Decoding Leadership for Outstanding Business Growth. President and founder of Noble International Business School, Professor Kweku Etu Ahinijima says Ghana must have a concise national innovation strategy. According to him, to engage in meaningful discussions about innovation on national scale, it was essential that such efforts are guided by a clear and strategic framework that will define and drive a cohesive national innovation strategy. He was speaking at the Certified Innovation Professional Association's Innovation Forum. The Certified Innovation Professionals Association's Forum, which was under the theme Exploring the Future Through Innovation, brought together industry leaders, experts, innovators, and other stakeholders to discuss ways to address societal and governmental issues with innovation at the center. In an interview, President of Noble International Business School, Professor Kwekwe Tiahinijima said, Ghana would benefit from a national innovation strategy that offers clear guidance to private businesses, helping entrepreneurs align their activities with national goals. If you look at forward-thinking uh, uh, um, countries like Singapore, UAE, those kind of countries, each one of them has got an innovation strategy. Unfortunately, in Ghana, we don't have an innovation strategy. We have, we have policies uh, scattered around every place, but we haven't got a concise innovation strategy that drives the entire economy. This is not for want of trying, because I've presented proposals for almost from 2008. I presented about four proposals to government, but nobody listened. President of the Certified Innovation Professionals Association, Dr. Richard Ampofobwedu, said the association was actively working to engage with young people by introducing innovation challenges in secondary schools. In my presentation, I made a clarity between being creative and then being innovative. Um, creativity does not necessarily translate to innovation. So we have to push a lot of these creative ideas into innovation. And that is exactly where us an association we sit. And we're going to churn out best practices in innovation and people will come out being more innovative at the end. Businesses were urged to provide evidence based certification to demonstrate their innovation capabilities. A reminder, you're still watching The Marketplace with me, Pius Kojubaka. We are back with more. Please stay. Thanks so much for staying on This is The Marketplace. To celebrate African Statistics Day, the Ghana Statistical Service has organized the data fair to give students the opportunity to learn about data collection aimed at bridging the gap between academia and industry. According to data scientists at the Ghana Statistical Service, David Maxwell Bissa, it is important for stakeholders and students to appreciate and understand the data provided to guide decision making. What we, DSS, has been doing and adapting new methods and you know leveraging technology to improve on our estimation is an a, opportunity for us to share with the students in a way to sort of bridge the gap between academia and industry and so what are the modern techniques that we have adapted to improve on our estimates in support of education policies and outcomes so the theme gives us the leverage to be able to engage particularly the students and share our experiences with them and see where the gaps are to also try to, you know, sort of inform their curriculum, you know, um, 
modifications and uh, updates on that. What we've already started, which we're going to deepen, is that over the years what we've been doing is to release the statistics, engage users to use them. But we've gone further to sort of, after a launch of a publication, we get around, uh, you know, a roundtable discussion or panel discussion, we, we gather stakeholders and key people who we know they will be using the statistics to actually go further to discuss the findings of the report. In a bid to ensure businesses play their part in achieving environmental, social and governance goals, stakeholders have been urged to dialogue on sustainable frameworks in that regard. In an interview with Joy Business, Dr. Isaac Mante, an ESG and sustainability consultant, called for the strengthening policies to enforce sustainable practices in the economy. He spoke at the Just Ended Strategic ESG and Sustainability Impact Summit. As the world transitions to a net zero economy, businesses are expected to adapt sustainable practices, ensure fair labor conditions, and promote inclusion and ethical standards. The Strategic ESG and Sustainability Impact Summit aims to facilitate conversations on sustainability, environmental, social and governance issues among stakeholders, including businesses and policymakers. Dr. Isaac Marte, conference speaker, explained how the summit will benefit businesses. It is important that businesses understand what this summit is about. What this summit tries to do is to look at environment, social governance, and sustainability in general. You know, when you talk about sustainability in the past, it was more of uh, businesses looking after shareholders. Okay, so it was more about profits. And over time, businesses have moved to looking after the communities as well. He also emphasized the need for strengthened policies to enforce sustainable practices in the economy. There are policies that we must make sure the policies work on the ground. So there is a disconnect. We need to have policies that will address the urgent problems we have in the country. Then we can talk about other policies that would help us in the long term. But for now, we need policies that will address the, the issues staring at us in the face, and that is land degradation, um, water quality, and even air quality uh, 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 as we go along the line. David Akindele Oluwashon, Head of Corporate Communications and Brand Management at Assess Bank, highlighted the crucial role of financial institutions in advancing sustainable financing through advocacy and continuous discussions. Lack of understanding of the um, and financial benefits of sustainability on businesses. And lastly, it would also be nice to say that most um, institutions or financiers have very short-term financial priorities because they, they want to invest now and see the impact now. And that's, those are common challenges we face. Um, looking at the part of the world we are in, I think it's important to continue to educate and also drive a lot of um, advocacy for policy, policy change or policy incentives uh, that can help um, um, everybody be up to speed. The two-day strategic ESG and sustainability impact summit was held on the theme towards a net zero future for businesses. Thanks so much for watching marketplace for today i am pios kojo baka for more stories do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business all the business stories you need to know are there for you grateful serving you